TNTM The Show presents... Talking Nerdy. October 2023. With your hosts, Pablo Gunner. Oh, Slay J. And the Ambassador. And we are here to talk nerdy to you about the nerdy stuff that... We've been doing lately, right? Yes. Or we've we've yeah. seen... Speaking of CGI, which there wasn't much in this movie, which was uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, which they really... I do know going into this, I read that like all the animatronics was kind of real. It's not like CGI'd or whatnot. So that was that was uh, exciting going into the movie. But uh, did they have like uh, someone in a suit, or was it just all? Yeah, it was uh, mostly uh, suited up. Uh, I think stuff, that would be so. your best approach for something like that. Was the suit instead of CGI? Mm-hmm. But um, if you've played the video game, uh, Pablo's played it. I haven't. So I was going in as just like a movie goer mm-hmm. into this, um, not knowing exactly the whole story. Um, it was cool at the beginning. They did show like little excerpts from the, like the, I guess the arcade game or, or whatnot. Um, what were your thoughts on it? So like you said, I, I have played the games. I've played all of them. Because they were on Xbox uh, Game Pass. I don't know if they are right now because I don't have Xbox Game Pass. Uh, but but I did, and, and I think, I don't know if it was last year or whatever, but I, I played them all, and I'm not big into horror games because uh, I'm a little girl inside, but <laughs> I get scared easy, but I was like, okay, you know, it's, it's Halloween, it's horror month, so I'm going to play them. This is a big deal. I want to see what all the talk is about. And so I played them, and their for their time, there they were. It was a brilliant idea, but of course, like the it kind of like I don't know. You get over it quickly though, like especially as it progresses, you go like, okay, this is just the same thing. Like you can't like it's hard to reinvent that wheel, you know, mm-hmm. over and over. But it was it was good while it lasted and what they did because it really and it, and what's great and I can see how like younger people are into it because. They like that jump scare. There's not blood. There's not gore. There's not anything, but it's that all about that jump scare. It's about the intensity because they're, you're a security guard, and that's what they do set this up really well in the movie, and it seemed like they did. They were going that path really well at first where they're like, oh, yeah, first night, you know, you watch the training video, which I think was almost the same video in the video game, and... I, but I thought they was going to go deeper into like, okay, you have to switch from all these different monitors to keep an eye on the animatronics because they come to life at night, right? And so that's how you keep them in place by keeping your eye on them. But as soon as you switch your camera, then they could move. So it's a lot just like managing your stuff because you can look at one specific or you can look at all of them, you know, like it's, it's just managing stuff and you're looking through the different cameras and they get more aggressive as the night goes on. And, and it is terrifying. It gets those jump scares, but it's no gore. It's just the jump scare. It catches you off guard. And the way that they, you know, the second game, they added, like, the vents and, you know, the tunnels and stuff. And there's sensors in there. So you have more that you have to maintain and keep an eye on. So it's more difficult. And then eventually, like, they end up at your house. I think, like, that was the last game. They end up in your house. And, like, you can hide in the closet or under the bed, curtains, whatever. But you, I think, I don't know if... I want to say you have you had like a camera system. Maybe you had like a handheld thing, and you just like flip through the different, you know, cameras that you have in your house and around your house, and stuff. And they kind of touch on that. Maybe it kind of a little, but for the most part, they really like after a few nights of him at the place, it really went off on its own thing. Well, honestly, I I think I counted, and it was only four nights that <laughs> that the movie really went into. You. Which is, I don't know, I didn't, uh, so, not not until I talked to you, because you you played the games, uh, did I really know, like, hey, the concept of Five Nights at Freddy's is because it progresses each night. And they didn't even throw any, like, st- they didn't even throw any story to that. They showed the monitors every now and then, but they're really trying to focus on this, uh, this brother and sister, um, like, what, like, story. That I thought it was like, his daughter because she mm-hmm. was I he I thought he was older, right? Mm-hmm. But it's actually yeah, it's actually his sister. So it goes into this story of where his bro when he was a kid, his brother was kidnapped by somebody and they never found him. And they he, don't know who did it. They like he relives the dream every night 
yeah. for it. Um, which was kind of weird. I don't know how he gets travels back to his dream every night. Well, because he was reading that book. Remember, he was that reading that book about like dream traveling. Uh, it's kind of like because I did something similar where I was like obsessed with lucid dreaming after I saw that one uh, movie Inception? about dream. Inception. So I was like, I want to learn how to master this power, right? So then I started do like reading on it and doing my info, and then like doing techniques that I read, like so that you could be in control of your dreams and stuff. It was, it's, and that's essentially like kind of what he was doing so that he could go back to that same dream and like discover like who stole his brother, like who kidnapped him and stuff like that. See, I get that obsession, but it just didn't make sense because he's a night security guard and he's supposed to be watching monitors. <laughs> right. No, it didn't <laughs> make it, sense. And then, then he's sleeping on the job. He's sleeping and, on the job. And yeah. then there's like a cop that comes by and she's very friendly. You don't know if there's some sexual tension or oh, there, oh, there yeah, was. There definitely no. <laughs> was, but it, it never, like, traveled down that route. Yeah, no. No, um, I didn't. Let me just say that the acting was horrible in this movie. It was complete dog shit. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was so bad. Like, the, the way the way um, that cop was delivering her lines was, like, so vague. Like, I know they're supposed to, like, give you, like, intrigue, but she was just, deli- oh, it's just this. And then just, like, no emotion. That's funny, because I got strong J-Law vibes from her. But probably more, like, X-Men J-Law vibes. Okay, you know? Girl, yeah. <laughs> and so, but, uh, yeah, I mean... And, and the thing is, the story was interesting. Like, okay, where... I don't know, they just made it weird, though, too, because they're like, oh, the ghost of children are in these animatronics. Yes. And then the ghost of these children are killing people... That didn't really make sense. Right. But then there was somebody who's in charge of all of them, and he's the original serial killer of these kids who's controlling them and killing more people. I don't... It was... It was it, weird. I don't know how he is controlling them. Also, at the same time, they had this other side story where it's like his aunt's trying to take his sister yeah. away, and then she hires people to go, like trash the the five or the freddy fazbears whatever yeah. it's called whatever it's called yeah um and then they go in they get killed you know i was like okay finally and they do it during the day when he's not even like in charge <laughs> yeah. like they're like if they would have done it when he was sleeping on the job at night like got him <laughs> yeah. you know but right. it's like dude locked up they stole his keys because like the chick you know babysits his sister yep. and then you're like oh, okay and it was just I don't know, because I think the guy is from Hunger Games, and uh, I don't I don't know if he's having trouble. I guess he's having trouble finding work as well as the character, because the character can't sense, the it? character can't find work because he beat up this man because he was security at the mall and he thought this man was kidnapping this kid, and and I don't know why I only made this connection now, which is he saw a repeat of what happened to his brother. Because they didn't connect that very well. They didn't. If they would have connected like he did that because he saw his childhood happening all over again, you'd be like, oh, that They could have started sense. off the movie with that. Like, with, like, his brother getting taken. Right. Instead of, like, this whole, like, okay, he needs a job. And then in, uh, you know, I don't know if we should spoil this, but, like... Um, we already have spoiled the movie. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. So, like, the guy that hires him is working at a temp agency... And he's like, oh, I have this other thing. It's like, you know, I don't know, I don't know if you'll like it or not. It's like he doesn't even try to sell the job to him, <laughs> even though like he's connected because he's the one that took the kid. And it's like, oh man, it was just, it was just a crap movie. Oh yeah, I'm only figuring out those dots too, where he saw his last name, yeah, and then he connected that that was that was the his brother that he kidnapped. But where was his like that? Yeah, I was like, there's so much of this where where they just failed to connect those dots. Because like, the where they were act, foreshadowing, but it was just a mess. The first act was set up great, because you're like, okay, we got this intrigue. You know, you're starting off, you see the other security guard getting just... Or was that him? At the very beginning. It was another security guard, right? Yeah. That gets killed. Um, yeah, it was a different one. Um, so... It's set up good, and then you're like, you have like this mysterious, like these robots, you don't know what's going on with them. And then they went this whole route with the kids and ghosts, and the kids magically show up in the dream now because he's there. And it's it's just, it was, it was weird. 
I th- I feel like they should have just stuck with the original story, which is essentially like these animatronics are haunted yeah. and they will murder you and you just have to maintain like that's the other thing is you have to maintain your battery power too, mm-hmm. right? So you can't keep your you can't keep your monitors on all the time because you'll run out of battery like early in the night and then they can just do whatever they want. So like it's it's just management, right? And like figuring out the algorithm to finish the game. Uh but yeah, if they would have stuck with that, because to me, and they could have done things too, because you don't care about the character, because you're like, dude, straight up just assaulted this dad in front of his kid, yeah, and because they didn't connect those dots, you don't understand why necessarily, mm-hmm. and even yeah. like with the, like the, the his sister was annoying, I didn't really care for him either. So even like when they took her into. The place, I was like, oh, I don't really care if she dies because she's annoying to me. Right. Well, I don't know if they're trying to like uh, point to the fact that she's on the spectrum or something. I, I, it was it was just so weird. I it but didn't explain so well. I'm just gonna say this. I'm just glad it was on Peacock and I, <laughs> and I didn't go out there and spend money on this movie because then I would have been really pissed. <laughs> yeah. I would have been upset if even talk nerdy to me bought a subscription <laughs> to Peacock to pay for this, even though it's not us. You know, that that's paying for it necessarily because, you know, we make money through other things. But, like, I still would have been like, damn it. <laughs> Why did we choose to have Peacock, like, with no ads or whatever? So... Because this is a strong pass for me. Like, strong pass. I mean, I, I want to give it some credit because I don't think it's the worst thing ever. And because... It, Peacock, I don't think you have to buy it, right? You just need like a... No, you just watch. Oh, so, oh, the, oh, you mean the subscription, the Peacock, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's included. Uh, so, I, it's not worth paying for it, for sure. Like, it's not worth... Is it worth your time? I think... Uh, like Because my wife and I were talking about other horror movies and other stuff the entire time of this movie. So, at, at most, I could say like it's it's a weak... It's think, a weak stream. I think it's it has a great concept of it, you know, but it just didn't execute really well. It didn't execute well, right? <clears throat> and I know this is a horror movie, but I expected just a little bit more out of the. I acting. don't even mind that it was PG thirteen because you can pull it off, like the game pulled it off, right? Like you, there's no. That's why the younger people can play it because there's no gore and there's no anything like that. Uh, and speaking of of that type of thing, like I watched Hereditary, they set this up perfectly. Right, like this movie was brilliant and also super messed up because you okay, it's called hereditary. Okay, so it's gonna be about how you pass things down to your kids, because you even see in the poster there's the mom and there's the daughter, right? So you go like, Oh, she's gonna pass and then even right away they go like she sets up, Yeah, I've had mental illness in my family, a lot of my family, they've killed themselves, you know, um, and stuff. So you're like, Okay, this so you're p- paranoid that you have mental illness and then you pass this down to your kids and stuff. And so then it, it even plants that seed in your own head. Like, do I have mental illness in my family? Do Have I passed mental illness to my kids? Are, are they going to have, you know, are they going to be bipolar, you know, or whatever, right? So you go like, so that's a thing. And, and just the way they set up things so well in that movie, like the grandmother passes away and even at the funeral, she's like, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of people that I that I don't recognize, you know, and that's kind of weird, but, you know, thanks for coming, and I appreciate that you're here to, you know, celebrate her life or whatever, right? And so you're like, okay, that's just like, you just think it's a one-off line the way that they play it off, but it's a foreshadowing moment that plays off later, and you see the dots connect once you get to that point, right? But at that one, it, pay, it takes a long time for that one line to pay off. There is something that happens early in, in the movie too, and this one, and they go the little girl. They keep on asking her. She eats like candy, or she'll be eating food, and they they ask her. Do her, her ever, not well. Everyone in her family asks her. Does that have nuts in it? Does that have nuts in it? Does that have nuts in it? And she's like, no, 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 right? Like, so right away you go, all right, she's allergic to nuts. That's well established, right? That was super smart, and you go, boom, once again, foreshadowing, and so right away you have that dread. And, and if you have kids, you go like, oh my God, you know, like, what are my kids allergic to? And what if, you know, because they even say like, do we have an EpiPen? No, we don't. Okay, we need to get an EpiPen, you know, like, so it puts that same fear of you if you're a parent. I don't know what it does to you if you're not a parent, but still, it even did things to me as a sibling uh, 
later on in the movie, which, you know, like, so the, the brother, he wants to go to this party and the mom's like, take your sister, but she's way younger. Right. And she, she is a weird, creepy kid. And she like, she does these clicks too. Like she goes like, you know, and stuff like that. And it's weird and it's creepy. And she's a creepy kid. And she says weird, creepy stuff. And she writes in this book and does creepy drawings. And it's weird and creepy. Another thing that sets up for down the road, right? And like I said, he goes to this party and they show it. And this, he goes to this party and some girl's just like crushing nuts. And you're like, damn it, here it is. And he's like, just, he's like, just piss off. Leave me alone. I'm going to go do, you know, because he's, he's looking to go talk to chicks, right? And so, and do his thing. So she's off to her own devices, you know, and they're serving cake. And you're like, oh my God. And, and so it sets right away. It sets right away. And so she, so she starts freaking out. He takes her to the ER right away. And they're like, he's just hauling right to the ER in this small town, you know, or a hospital or whatever. And there's, and then he veers off because there's something dead. There's something dead in the road and he veers off. And the little girl, she was, she couldn't breathe. So she had her head out the window and he hits a pole and she just gets decapitated. And I was like, and he stops, right? He stops. And I started freaking out because I was like, oh my God, what if that was me as a sibling and something horrible like that happened, right? Um, because, I mean, it's not to that level, but I, I've, I've hurt my brother by accident when he was younger, you know? And he was like similar, like he's like almost 10 years younger than me. And I, to this day, still feel horrible about it. And I had flashbacks of that. Like, that brought that back up to the surface. But then it multiplied it, right? Like, times a million. Because it's like, oh my god, what would you do? Like, if you killed your sibling by accident, what would you do? And you're like, oh my god. Like, to me personally, I was like, I would just like, I would be like, what? why is he not killing himself? Like, I would kill myself. Like, I would do literally anything. Drive and do that same pole anything right like so that i would not have to deal with the guilt of it or have to deal with my parents ever and he but i mean and that's the thing is his acting was top notch the everyone in this movie was top notch because so like he goes home and then he parks and he just goes to bed now he doesn't go to sleep because he's messed up right like you can't sleep after that who could sleep after that and so he's just there sleepless the mom's like all right i'm gonna go get groceries and she sees the the headless body in there and loses it and the way that she reacted is probably the same way that I would re react if that happened to me as a parent. Because, and that I related to that, and that messed that meant do this movie just continuously messed me up as it progressed, and uh, and so then it turned into instead like he starts hearing the clicks that his sister does. So then it changes from like this hereditary thing like oh of mental illness to. Oh, this is a haunting movie now. His sister is now haunting him, right? Because then stuff starts happening to him at school and stuff, and it's creepy and it's weird. And uh, and then like sometimes he sees her, like he'll see her like in corners of the room or whatever, and it's it's creepy. And then, but like I said, they they plant this other seed where they put like a flyer into the door slot of the house and it says seance, you know, it's something about seances, but it's a quick moment and then they move on. And, you know, and, and the mom's going to this grief counseling meetings and stuff. And, uh, and so they, you know, even that, like she talks to this lady and then so this lady starts, that's how it goes. The lady's like, oh yeah, I can talk to my grandson, you know, I'll show you and stuff. And then the mom's like, okay, great. Now I can talk to my daughter, you know? So she gets the whole family in on it, you know, and stuff. And the dad's like, I don't want to be part of this, but the son's like, okay, fine, you know, so that he gets some kind of closure, right? Um, but, uh, yeah, so then it goes from that, and then, um, then the mom finds out that her, her mom, that her mom, the grandma, essentially, she was part of this giant cult, and that this is just part of some giant scheme so that this spirit can take over the grandson and be like this cult leader, like he's like, like a king of some level of hell or, or some, I don't know. It's, it just, and then it turns into like this cult movie, like by the, it's messed up. The movie is messed up. It's crazy. It's phenomenally well done. And that's all I have to say about that.